So I'll click right here. So we've entered into the fleet page of the mycaseih.com portal. Uh, we can see where we're at and navigate from the fleet page to the data page to the farm page by going up here to the left top corner of the screen, choosing the uh, hamburger menu, and you'll see that we've got three choices that we can make here to move between fleet, farm, and data. We are just going to stay currently at the fleet page. This is the landing page once you leave the My Brand site, the MyCaseIH.com site. And you can see that we've got some machines running out there. Uh, the top combine right there, remember I aliased that with Kirk's 9250. So you can see that that name is there versus the one just above it that has just got a serial number uh, for reference. So you can see the, uh, the positives and the advantage of being able to go in there and give it more of a common name. And we can see Mike Moldrum down below here, uh, Russ Finney down here out in the field, Brett Gutneck has also done the same with the vehicles that they're working with out in the field so that they can quickly identify their vehicles uh, and find them in a list, especially when you've got a fleet of 72 vehicles that we've got right here. So we're in the overview section we are in the list portion of the overview section, and we can go down and load 25 vehicles at a time. So you can see the ones that we've got right here. As vehicles go into different modes, uh, the green mode here you can see is in work. Uh, we can move into the, into the moving. It'll change orange when we're in idle, um, and we can load more vehicles throughout the site. So as we move through this, I wanted to bring your attention also, we'll load a few pages and we'll keep going down. And what I wanna to get to are some vehicles that we've got down here that are grayed out. So what the grayed out means is these vehicles no longer are visible or present on the portal for one of two reasons. The top one here says expired. Expired means that the data plan with this vehicle on the modem has expired and needs to be renewed for it to be visible again. Just like any of our cell phones, uh, if we get a new phone or we didn't pay our bill and they shut it off, uh, or we just run out of, of um, interest in the phone anymore and we let the uh, thing expire itself, that's exactly what's going on here. We've lost data connectivity uh, through the cellular plan. Uh, but that's easily done by your dealer uh, with the VMS tool and, and brought back in. The next one down there is called Archived. Archived is actually a vehicle that has been transferred out of this company by a dealership into the dealer inventory and is ready to be retailed to a new customer, moved to a new company, whatever the case might be, but it has left and is no longer a vehicle that is active inside of our company that we're looking at here uh, in AFS Connect. So those are the two uh, areas that, that you may run across inside of your database. If we go up just a little bit higher, you'll see that we've got some vehicles that are active, but they've got this strange icon over to the left of them. They're still showing that it was in work or key on as this one does down here. And what is happening is this particular uh, insignia means that it's lost cellular coverage. There's many reasons that you can do that. You've gone into an area that isn't covered by cell coverage, dropped down maybe over uh, into a river bottom uh, where the cell tower no longer has signal uh, that can reach in there. You've pulled it into your shed. It's in the, uh, the dealership shop. Somehow it's lost connectivity. And what it'll do instead of just remaining in a green in work mode on the portal after a period of time, it'll put this icon up and turn it gray indicating that there's no connectivity and the last, it'll show the last time that it was connected and the engine hours at that time. So you just need to discover why we've lost that, uh, that cellular coverage uh, for this. And in most cases, somebody knows right away why we've lost coverage. Oh yeah, it's sitting in the shed and I can't get any cell service in there anyhow. So I know exactly where that machine is. So that, uh, that's the indication of, of what we've got going on there. If we move back up to some of the healthy vehicles that are out there working right now, 
We can get an idea of what is going on with them, the number of engine hours uh, that are on the machine. And as we sit here about once a minute, this data will change and you'll see a new number appear uh, depending on what's being sent from that vehicle and the CAN messages. In this list, we provide in AFS Connect two areas under the fleet tab that you can customize what you want to view inside the custom one and custom two columns. And to show you how that's done, we can go in, and since we've got combine sprayers and tractors in here, I can go in and check what I want to view inside of that custom one column. So currently, if we go in, I'll minimize this, we've got engine load uh, for that. And under combines, it says yield average and, and wet. So let I want to change that, that combine one just from the yield. I want to change it to uh, maybe something like, um, oh, concave opening. So I want to monitor the concave opening on the combine. I'll hit apply. So a uh, good example here of what, uh, what happens when you select something. Until it reports in the next time, you won't have a number in there. That's just because the system here updates once a minute. And when I make that change, we need to be patient on, on what we're looking at here. So that's the way that we can customize these two columns depending on the operation that either the tractor is in or what we want to visualize uh, for CAN messages inside of combine sprayers and so forth. So with that, we can also go in and see where these machines are uh, by going and picking the map view. So up here in the top, you'll see we're in list view right now, but if I go over to map, this is gonna show me in North America where all these vehicles are. And this one is fairly easy to find. It's right down here in Georgia uh, working, so I can pick the 9250 and go in and uh, even see the vehicle details of this particular machine in work. So I can see in the last seven days that it's been running for six hours and 23 minutes. It's used 81.33 gallons of fuel uh, with an average in the harvesting of 13.04 uh, gallons per hour. So I've got a lot of information that's available to me, but if I want to do some, some uh, technical uh, deep diving on this machine, I can hit this parameters tab up in the top right corner. What that'll allow me to do is go in and now I can see all of the uh, CAN messages in it. And one of the things that, uh, that I see is I've got a uh, plug that's probably unplugged or a sensor that's bad under this gearbox oil temperature because I'm sure in South Georgia uh, at the first part of August that it is not minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see here, I get real suspicious when I see the last time that is reported in was in June. And I'm highly suspecting that the wire has come loose on that sensor. Uh, and it's just frozen in, in, in time there. But uh, again, this is a real uh, world experience that we can see right here, and I can see that I've got an issue. Uh, I can call this to the attention of my dealer and say, hey, that sensor has gone bad or it's unplugged. Could you please get that thing updated for me? And I haven't even left my office. I can do this all right from the, the comfort of my uh, computer in my office and uh, keep everything running on the machine. So as I move through this, I'll just give you a taste of the different CAN messages, including going down and we've got the yield, the grain flow, the moisture on that machine, the time right here, military time is showing the last time and it just reported from 1353 to 54. Some of the numbers changed. And I can even see exactly how my operator has this machine set up with the concave setting the elevator speed, the fan speed, uh, I can get a real good idea that if this machine is running perfectly and I've got two other machines working in the same field uh, and I want to duplicate them, I can do that from right here by just getting a hold of the other two combine operators and having them set up the uh, characteristics of the machine exactly as I see right here. So again, a very powerful tool to go in and uh, maintain uh, some operational uh, views and parameters of exactly what's going on in a near real time uh, experience. So what we'll do now is uh, move back to the uh, overview. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I wanna go in and see where this combine is operating. 
So I'm gonna go in and choose the three dots over on the right side, map view, and this is gonna take me in. So what we've got here uh, is the zoomed in now, we can see exactly where we're at with this combine. Uh, again, as everything updates on a minute by minute uh, basis, uh, something that uh, will happen is you'll see this machine actually move across the field or to its next position since it's running. And we can see it's going about 2.3 mile an hour. Uh, we can see the fuel level on board, uh, the current engine hours, um, all the pertinent data that we like to take, uh, take note of. You just saw it jump right there. So he's uh, harvesting from uh, west to east in this pass. Uh, so we can see exactly what's going on. Something else in the vehicle details I'd like to, uh, to show you is in these parameters, all of this data that we were looking at earlier is collected once a minute. It's all kept on the portal for a period of 24 months. So in the 24 month period, if I wanna come back and I have information that I'd like to maybe pull from this, for example, on this combine, I wanna see how much fuel it took in this field to harvest this crop. I could go in and capture this and go up and build a report, which will give us one of two uh, ways to save it. We can do it with a CSV, which is a comma delineated file used in Excel or I could even uh, save it in a JSON file, uh, a database uh, format, and I could go in and capture this information and then slice and dice, if you will, all this data to figure out all sorts of different uh, ideas. You know, how much fuel do I use on, on an average harvest? Maybe I want to pre-order uh, fuel on what I'm working with. I can get some very good numbers here from actual data of, of what I used for my season and, uh, and use real world information to create uh, information that I can buy and purchase whatever I'm doing out there uh, from, okay? So I wanted to get in and that's under the reports section of our tab. Again, we were in overview earlier and I went over to reports and I can build that. So let's just step through a real quick report here. And we're gonna pick this Steiger right here and I wanna go in and monitor what's going on. The vehicle, so the vehicle uh, detail and the parameters will show me the CAN messages. CAN messages from the vehicle are saved on the portal for 24 months. I may wanna look at this Steiger, uh, maybe after planting or tillage uh, season, whatever the case might be, and I wanna go back and I wanna pull some information from it. So maybe I want something like how much fuel did this vehicle use uh, during spring planting season. So what I can do is go up to my reports tab and I can add a new report and what I'm gonna do is name this 2020 tillage. And I'm gonna send this as a CSV. Choose next. And I wanna choose the quad track. I'll just choose the 580 quad track. Select next. Choose my date range. So this is my uh, during my spring season. So I'm going to go back in time here and start at the first of March, and we're going to end with uh, when we went into planting season. So let's just say in this area that uh, that was back at the end of May, and I know the crop was uh, put in and all the tillage was done beforehand. Okay, and then hit generate. And what this is gonna do is create a 2020 tillage database in a CSV file. Uh, I've got one vehicle in there, so I could have put the entire fleet of Steigers if I wanted to and seen what the fuel uh, use was, or just one at a time. So I just have this database. So all of the CAN parameters are in there, and now I can extract how many gallons of fuel that are in this database were used during that calendar time on that particular tractor. So this is useful information, maybe next year, my farm isn't gonna change size uh, and I can pre-order fuel or whatever the case might be 
uh, I've got exactly the number of gallons that I used on this tractor for that particular purpose. Okay, let's take a look at alerts. So again, we'll go back to our overview uh, page. We can see what the machines are doing, but maybe we want to see what kind of fault codes have come off these machines. So we'll pick the alerts, and what this is going to do is let our entire uh, fleet load of all the fault codes that are out there. But uh, I might be interested only in this uh, Finney tractor, the 580 uh, quad track. So if I click that, it'll go through and it'll filter only the fault codes that have been thrown from that tractor versus the entire list of 72 vehicles. So what you can see here is a few of the uh, fairly minor fault codes. They're uh, just a medium level. We can see the date and time that they are thrown. And if we go over here to the right and actually pick one of these, uh, it'll open it up and give us a little bit more detail. So we can see the last occurrence uh, that it was thrown. It's the transmission, uh, input shaft speed sensor, and I see that it's been thrown four other times. And I can go in and click that and it'll open up and show me uh, the occurrence history of when it's been thrown in other situations. So again, how often is this happening maybe is a question that my technician might have. And he can go in here and check and see is there a wear part, is there something happening? Uh, it can give you a little bit uh, more detail into what's going on with the machine. The only difference is when we move into red uh, fault codes, which are the severe fault codes, and let's just go through a couple of these and see if we can find one. So if I go in, I can filter the severity, and you can see that there are two times at the fault code. A red fault code will send a text message directly to the farm manager in whoever set up the account originally. These are critical fault codes. Uh, they're uh, fault codes that we want immediate attention to, and therefore when the uh, farm manager goes in and puts in his phone number, he can go in and have that fault code sent directly to him right when it's thrown. Uh, these a lot of times are ones that you want to have the machine shut off until we get to attention brought to it. And uh, if we notify a couple of people besides the guy on the machine, we can ensure that we maybe stop a, uh, an issue from going too far uh, and costing us more money in repairs. We can get the machine shut down right away. So the fault code side of it is, uh, is very valuable. Uh, plus, it allows our technician to check maybe before he comes out and services a vehicle or does any type of uh, emergency visit that maybe the customer called and said, hey, I've got an issue out here. He can go and check the fault codes and come up with some diagnostic plan before he even leaves the shop and put parts on board the service truck that he can uh, uh, have a pretty good idea of what the issue is and then go in and uh, have those parts with him and only have one round trip going out to the machine, fixing it and coming back instead of a diagnostic trip, coming back to the, the shop and getting parts and returning to fix it. Uh, so it's uh, quite efficient, uh, a lot of savings and the technician can uh, be on to another job uh, helping somebody else out fairly quickly without making two round trips. So the next thing uh, we can talk about is the notifications. Again, we'll start back at the overview page. Notifications is the ability for us to let these machines now call us and notify us when something is happening outside of a set group of specs that we may have put together. So under the notifications tab, what we can do is we can set up uh, ways for the vehicle to notify us when it's outside of a, a certain spec or characteristic. Uh, you can see down here, I've got one that is speed. Uh, and what this particular one says is when the ground speed of the vehicle is above 20 miles an hour for 15 seconds, send me a text. And that's exactly what's going on right here in, in this uh, uh, preferences area or column. So it's going to notify me by web and what web means is up here in the top when I, uh, this characteristic uh, and notification is thrown it'll be stored up here but I don't want to come and visit this all the time to monitor what's going on. I want it texted directly to me. So if I go out here you can see that it's already set up with SMS and the way that is done is when you get this notification created select edit preferences and the phone number uh, of 
the uh, farm manager is going to be sitting right here. And I just filled in the checkbox and hit confirm. And when I do that, SMS appears. And now when this tractor or combine or sprayer meets these parameters, my phone will sound with a text that it's going faster than uh, 20 miles an hour. So you can imagine uh, maybe we've instructed a combine driver and he's new not to go slower than three and a half miles an hour and not faster than six and a half miles an hour. I could set those speed uh, uh, segments up and if he falls into that zone, maybe going three miles an hour below the speed that I uh, want him to, I'll get a uh, message texted to my phone. I'll get on it, call him up. Hey, what's going on out there? Well, you know, when you set this up, you didn't tell me that there was down corn out here, so I have to slow way down. Well, if there's down corn, I also want you to reset the machine. We don't want the fan running as fast as it is. We want to reset some of the sieves because you're going to be going slower. So what we can do is maximize what's going on as we go through this and, uh, and set the machine into its optimum uh, characteristics as we go through. Okay, so we've just finished with fleet, so let's move over to the farm tab.